Hey, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon. You apparently won't see my new content without it. If you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. You can also support me on Subscribestar. You can find the links in the description or in the pinned comment. Thanks. Now, before I go into this topic, I want to make it perfectly clear that I don't give a damn about skin color. I'm not a white supremacist. I'm not a white nationalist. I don't support nor do I interact with those types of people. I would never even talk about this racial stuff if it weren't for the media and the Democrats and the left trying to make racism a mainstream concept again. CNN and the media at large have a serious problem with people of a certain skin color and a certain gender, and they're not afraid to show their bigotry in the open. The scourge of the planet Earth, the enemy to all that is good and colorful in the world. What people are we talking about? Well, we're of course talking about the colorless cave beasts known as white men. And people wonder why these it's okay to be white signs keep popping up everywhere. It's because people like these keep insisting there's something wrong with it. Over the course of 24 hours, CNN hammered on Beto's quote, white maleness a total of 52 times. The media and the Democrats have taken issue with all the white males that are running for president in the Democrat party for 2020. But in this case, they focus specifically on Beta Beto. It seems his little nickname is not gonna shield him from attacks from the regressive left on his skin color and his gender. Ask yourselves, how completely brainwashed do you have to be to preach about opposing hate and racism and then turn around and fearmonger about the skin color of one of the presidential candidates? Just take a look and see for yourself. This is seen as a moment by some where Democrats want to nominate either a woman or a minority. Better O'Rourke is neither of those things. O'Rourke is a white male. Something that's very evident to everyone and that is that he's a white man. He's also a white male. And he's conscious of his white maleness. They may not be open to another white male. Another white male. Another white male. A lot of the energy in the party right now is not for a white man. Vulnerability is running as a white man. As a white male. Being a white man, yeah. something he can't change. Being a white man who says, I'm, you know, I was born to do this. Gosh, you know, to say that it just sort of drips of, of white male privilege. Beto or work benefited from white privilege. One of the big debates is whether 2020 is the year of the white man. He can't get over the fact that he's a white man, so he just has to accept that. Not the right time for a, a white man to run for the presidency. Is a white man the right guy to, you know, to be the next nominee? There's still a, an issue in this country where people just get very, very excited about white men. He seems very self-aware of his perceived weaknesses. Uh, in this case, you know, the fact that he's a white male. Just replace all the times that they said white males and replace it with black males or brown males and suddenly it sounds a lot more insidious. Especially John Berman there at the end saying that his white skin color is a weakness. I wonder if he realizes he just admitted that the Democrat party doesn't like white people. And isn't it interesting that a lot of these people complaining about the white skin color of the presidential candidates are themselves white males? I wonder if they consider that one day maybe it will be them giving up their jobs because of their skin color and their gender. Maybe they have taken that into consideration and maybe they're just playing along because they think they'll get a pass. But they're giving Beta Beto no pass at all and he was even out there all last week apologizing for the fact that he's a white male and has privilege. Although CNN was out there today praising him for all the apologizing that he's doing, saying that maybe Democrat voters will give him a chance despite his white skin color. Well, I think that, you know, these two men are talking to distinctly different audiences. That works for Trump because the people who support him love that about him, that he never apologizes. You know, Beto O'Rourke's audience, they love that he is constantly reflecting, telling people what's in his head. I mean, that is his strength. And they want to hear him apologize, say how his views have changed. Um, and I think that people will give him a chance. I think that the left loves men that apologize profusely because they like weak leaders that can be easily manipulated with screaming and lamentations from their small but loud mobs. If they must have a white male leader, they want one that's weak and easily controlled. <laughs> I can't believe I'm sitting here defending Beto, especially one he won't even defend himself. But I do think it's necessary to call out this rhetoric when it's being repeated over and over in the mainstream mass media. If you're a white guy in the Democrat party, then you should know that your party wants you to move to the back of the bus. They don't care about content of character and they don't care about getting the best person for the job. They only care about skin color and gender in the most shallow of senses. I'm fine with whatever gender or skin color the president is, but I will never choose my president based on those factors.